I had the terrible misfortune of learning about the day that Cinderella went woke. My children love Cinderella. And in truth, so have generations of children. But it turns out that it is a deeply sexist, misogynistic piece of work. The wicked stepmother wasn't really wicked because women can't be wicked to each other. She's just a frustrated lady done certain age with a difficult relationship with her stepdaughter. Her stepdaughter doesn't really want to marry a prince, although my daughter does and plays at Cinderella most days. Cinderella really wants to get on in her career and doesn't want to be kissed back to life. Doesn't necessarily even like apples. Cinderella actually didn't want to marry a prince, didn't want to marry at all. Because of course that's the old patriarchy game. The new film of Cinderella has the prince who, as my next guest put it, uh, quite brilliantly, how shall I put it, he said, doesn't look as if he'd be really that interested in a princess. He does ask Cinderella for her hand in marriage, but Cinderella turns him down. She wants to put her career first. It is a rewriting of history, a rewriting of our culture, but it's also dreadful. It is utterly boring and bereft of any, any circumstance that might have made Cinderella the story that Disney made it and that entertained so many generations of our young people. Michael McCaffrey is our resident film and culture critic and I'm glad to welcome him back here onto the mother of all talk shows. Michael, you must have, because I'm sure we pay you to do so. You must have watched this dreadful film. Tell us about it. Um, hello, George. It's great to see you again. And, and you. great to be here. Uh, yes, I watched this movie for no other reason than I was paid to watch this movie. God help me. Uh, I did not receive combat pay, at least not yet, but I think I should have. Um, you sum this movie up pretty good. It's it's a really dreadful, dreadful movie. It's, it's amateurish uh, at best. But the thing that struck me about it when I was watching it was, my goodness, it is so relentlessly, aggressively woke and uh, meaning to indoctrinate really young girls into this sort of uh, worldview, which, you know, you, you can have your opinions on that, but just to give you a, a slight taste of how wonderful this movie is, um, you're correct, Cinderella is interested in her career first. She actually has a line where the prince, you know, says he loves her and she says, well, if I have a choice, I choose me. And I thought, oh, wow, that's how educational for people to be so uh, self-centered. Good for her. But she she doesn't want to be the princess. The prince doesn't want to be the prince either. He doesn't want to be king. So thankfully, they wrote in a character, Princess Gwen, who is the younger sister of the prince, who is very frighteningly similar to Hillary Clinton. She's she's <laughs> very smart and no one listens to her. All these men just ignore her. The uh, evil uh, stepmother, of course, is not evil at all. She's just misunderstood because the patriarchy took away her dream of being a musician. Um, oh, and, and the fairy godmother is not uh, a fairy godmother. It's a genderless godparent um, played by Billy Porter uh, in an extravagant display of horrible acting and uh james corden shows up as well which should make everybody so excited james shows up playing a a fat mouse um which you know as i said my piece feels a little bit like typecasting to me but hey 
<laughs> your, <laughs> your mileage may vary on that. But this movie is just relentless in in its sort of political uh, point of view being put for put forth. Uh, well, forward. I, as you describe it so brilliantly, it's bound to win the Oscar and break box office <laughs> records. Well, yes, yes. Well, as it, it's funny you bring that up because the the film is on; it's streaming on Amazon, and Amazon, as I wrote about this year, and I'm, and I'm sure you, you're aware, they have new rules, you know, mandatory quotas in their uh, entertainment products, and it's not just quotas in front of the camera, but also behind the camera, and in the narratives they're allowed to make. Disney has done the same thing, and of course. Last year, the Academy Awards came out with their new rules that if you want to be considered for an award, you have to have certain quotas uh, in front of the camera, behind the camera, and in the story. So this fits right in. Of course, considering how useless the Academy Awards are, this should get nominated multiple times this year because it fits, it, it checks all the boxes that they think they need to check to get in. Of course, God help us if it if it does. I can't imagine it would. It's it's so dreadful. It's remarkable how awful this movie it is. It, it really is. And I just want to say to you, George, you're welcome for having me watch it so that you don't have to. <laughs> There's a lot of our viewers and listeners saying that to themselves <laughs> right now. Uh, the one thing that you can, I think, uh, be sure of is that our daughters will not be clamoring to see it because it is bereft of all magic. And when you're a little girl, trust me, I mean, my daughters are the daughters of revolutionary parents. We are not royalists. We are not capitalists. We are revolutionary people. But our daughters, for some reason, are interested in palaces and princesses and unicorns and princes kissing princesses and asking for their hand in marriage. So if that's my daughters, I think most people's daughters are the same. So it's not likely to appeal uh, to young girls, is it? Who, does, who is it made for? Hillary Clinton? Well, that's the question, right? Who is it made for? And of course, the reason it's made at all is because James Corden produces this, by the way, um, ah. and it and it's it's a jukebox. <laughs> the plot musical. thickens. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, strike two, and it's a jukebox musical, which he has sort of made a career out of his, uh, you know, carpool karaoke. So it's popular songs, and the lead in it is Camila Cabello, who's a pop star. So it's meant to sort of appeal to a certain strain of young girl, but it doesn't, and who it really is meant to appeal to is the people making so that they can sort of signal their virtue of, oh, look how progressive we are. Look how, uh, you know, on the surface, of course, their pro progressivism, um, that sort of thing. Now, it's interesting, Cinderella, the, the fairy tale, you, you know, uh, came to prominence in 1950 with the Disney uh, version, which has been enormously successful. It's very well done. Um, but it gets made sort of every generation. In 97, Whitney Houston played the fairy godmother in one. Um, Hilary Duff was, in 2004, was sort of at the height of her popularity. She played Cinderella. And just a few years ago, I think it was 2015, uh, Kenneth Branagh directed a version of Cinderella starring Lily James. It had, had a terrific cast. Kate Blanchett was in it. Helena, Helena Bonham Carter was in it and it was very very faithful to the original material um and and that film which you know i i would not run out to a movie theater to see just because it's not for me but that movie made half a billion dollars wow and it, it you know it didn't win any awards it wasn't a big deal but it made a ton of money and it made a ton of money because the cinderella fairy tale as as all fairy tales do it's why they resonate with people connects with people on a much much deeper level than just the surface uh story of oh a boy meets a girl and and you know she becomes princess he's the prince it's 
It works on an archetypal level, which is why little girls love it. And little boys actually watch those things and, and appreciate them. The archetypal level is not about uh, a woman being subservient to the man who quote unquote saves her. It's about the coming together, you know, and, and this is Jungian psychology. So forgive me if it's a bit much, but um, it's the coming together of the opposite. So the, the feminine and the masculine come together as equals to create the whole and the whole is the kingdom. The kingdom is made whole when the prince finds the princess and they come together in agreement, the feminine and the masculine. Heaven and for friend, this... heaven for friend. Yes, yes. We'll, God, we'll be run God out of here, us. Michael. Uh, <laughs> the very idea of it. Uh, and I don't know if you're a football fan, but yesterday was a miraculous day. Cristiano Ronaldo. I was Ronaldo. gonna mention it, George. Yes, I was gonna mention it. Cristiano Ronaldo uh, set the country alight uh, with his return to Old Trafford. And all of my life, which has been a long one, there's been a man of the match. I noticed overnight that Cristiano Ronaldo is now the player of the match. Even oh. though he's a man, even though it was men's football, and everybody on the park playing with him and against him was also a man, he cannot now be called man of the match. Just think about well, that. Well, thank goodness for that, because uh, <laughs> how, how damaged would people feel if Cristiano Ronaldo was the man of the match? That, exactly. would, that would harm so many people. That's an act of violence, George. I'm sure you know that. Michael uh, McCaffrey, well, you, are, uh, you are the <laughs> oracle on film and culture, <laughs> and I'm glad to say you are our man.